Thank you very much, Ed. Hall of Fame members, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and baseball fans here and all over the world today. I would like first to uh, say to the Fox family and those members of the Wells and of the Sordas, I would like to congratulate each and every one of you. I'm honored, Tommy, to go in with you because we have done some battles before and it's a honor sitting next to you. I'm extremely proud to be here on this 50th anniversary of Jackie Robinson. I'm not that old, folks. I didn't play with Jackie or against him, so uh, I know he was the greatest ball player probably of all time. I, the Honorable Zella, Zella Miller, uh, the Honorable Governor from the great state of Georgia is here today, and uh, I've heard him say many times that if you see a turtle sitting on the fence post, you know it didn't get there by itself. And I certainly didn't get here by myself today. And I just want to give you a few reasons why I am. To a lady who brought me into this world about 58 years ago, who uh, fed me and she washed my clothes and she made sure that I was fed properly and always had that crease in the front of my pants and my, my shirts were washed and Dinner was on the table at 9.30 in the evening with me and my dad got through playing ball in the backyard. Absolutely the finest mother a man could have. And I'm very fortunate that she can be here today. And that's sitting in a row, my mother. People on their birth certificate says Henrietta Necro. Her friends call her Ivy. I call her mom. My mom is still Necro. We're all very fortunate in our life to be blessed to be associated with certain people in our lives. And I have been. 30, uh, 32 years ago, when I walked on a charter flight with Milwaukee Braves, I walked on the airplane, I told one of the guys on the Milwaukee Braves, I saw my wife, which was a flight attendant, and I told, this, I told Gene Oliver, in fact, I said, I'm going to marry that lady. And I'm going to spend the rest of my life with her. And I have. She has laughed with me and she has cried with me. And she has kept me warm in many more ways than one. Married for 31 years. The finest wife a man can have, my wife Nancy. We all have sisters, we all have daughters, and sons and daughters and nieces and nephews. My wife gave me three healthy and lovely boys, and they're with me here today. And uh, I love them, and I always will, and I'm as proud of my sons as any man could be of his sons. Don't have any daughters, but I've got three great ones. And those are my sons, Philip, John, and Michael. We all have sisters and brothers. I have the finest brother and the finest sister in the world. I know that. I have a sister that I've known, well, all my life. <laughs> and probably if there was a Women's Hall of Fame today, she would probably be in it because she's the one that caught my knuckleball in the backyard. And can still catch it. She is in my Hall of Fame. If you've never been touched by an angel, you've never shaken my sister's hand. My sister Phyllis Dilmore, right here. A lot of us have brothers and a lot of us don't. I've got one. And there ain't that my mind, he's the best. My, my dad always said he always wanted to have both of his boys play in the big leagues, but he'd settle for one. And we both made it there. Pitched against this guy nine times in my career. He won five and I won four. 
I guess the way it should be, because he's the baby. I, wanted, I don't say this a lot, but my brother Joe has gotten one hit off of me in those nine games. He has hit one home run in the big leagues, and he hit it off of me. And won the ball game. I'm extremely blessed to be able to call this guy my brother. He is the best, Joe. I love you very much, my brother Joe Necro. I know Don mentioned this other gentleman, and I just want to touch on him because uh, we all grew up with certain people in our lives, and I grew up with this guy. He could hit a baseball and play baseball better than I could. He could shoot a basketball better than I could, which you all know, and he could throw a football further than I do. Well, he th one thing he couldn't do better than me was throw a knuckleball. He's been an inspiration to me all my life, and that's a great friend, my good friend, John Havlicek. Thank you, John. In 1988, when the late Bill Mon was a scout for the Milwaukee Braves and came into my kitchen in Lansing, Ohio, about 1,200 people, and sat down and gave me the chance to sign my name to a professional baseball contract, Eau Claire, Wisconsin, for $275 a month. Probably more than some of these guys made when they first signed, but that was a lot of money to me. My father says, Mr. Mon, you're not gonna let my son, you're not gonna get my son. I'm not going to let him go until we sit down and work out a little deal here. And Bill Mon and my dad did it. And Bill Mon wrote my dad a check for $500. And my dad accepted it because I think that's about as much as he made in, in a month in the coal mine. So to the Bill Mon family, I never and never will forget Bill Mon. My certain, absolutely, thanks to the Atlanta Braves organization where I was born and where I retired. They are absolutely, to me, the first class organization in a country. And there's a lot of players could will dispute that to me, but those who have not played with the Leonard Braves know what I'm talking about. From my first minor league manager in 1989, Wellsville, New York, Harry Miner, to my last minor league manager in Richmond in 1966, Bill Adair, and in between, when I played in Jacksonville, Florida, my manager by the name of Red Murph walked up to me and said, Sonny, he said, if you get that knuckleball over the plate, you can pitch in the big leagues. And I believed him. I've had a lot of respect for Red, and I still do, and he's here today, and I just want to say thank you, Red, for finally someone in my lifetime at that age telling me that I could pitch in the big leagues with that knuckleball. Of course, my thanks to Bill Bartholomew, who was the boss before Ted got there. Bill, thank you very much. And to Ted Turner. Everybody should play for one manager in their lifetime or one organization, and everyone should play for the Atlanta Braves sometime in their life. To George Steinberg and the New York Yankees for giving me two years in 84 and 85 when the Braves released me and gave me a chance to win my 300th game. To Joe Klein and Danny O'Brien, Cleveland Indians in 86 and 87, for giving me two more years to be able to play the game again. And the Toronto Blue Jays for trying me one more time for a month in Toronto in 1987. And I thank you. And especially again to Atlanta Braves, Ted Turner and Stan Kasten for assigning me for one day, for one dollar, to pitch one game, or at least start one game, to be able to walk out on that field and knowing that I was going to end my career with Atlanta Brave head on. And if they hadn't done that, I'd still probably be asking them if I could have done that. So to the Braves organization, thank you for doing that. I know there are some people from Ohio. Is anyone from Ohio here? I'm sure there's a few of you. In Georgia, in that little town in Lansing, Ohio, about 1,200 people. To the Ohio Valley. Bridgeport High School, Lansing Grade School, St. Joseph's Church, the Lansing Sportsman's Club. I know you guys are here today. Braves 400 Club, who I've known for, oh, I don't know how long. 
Thank you for coming. If a lot of you saw the movie Field of Dreams in the latter part of that movie, when Kevin Costner was standing by his father in that baseball field, and Kevin looked, Kevin's father looked at him and he opened his eyes and looked around and he says, is this heaven? And Kevin Costner said, no, this is Iowa. If that movie was made in Lansing, Ohio, Blaine, at that ball field where I played at, that would have been probably rewritten because his father would look at Kevin and said, Kevin, am I in heaven? And Kevin would have said, no. You're in Ohio, but today you're in heaven. I have had the pleasure to play. I'm going to have to back that up for just one second. Kevin Costner's father would have said, am I in Ohio? And Kevin would have said, no, you're in heaven. Back in the fall of 1993, a friend of mine named Bob Hope called me and asked me if I would consider managing a women's professional baseball team. And I said, Bob, I don't think so. I said, I played baseball all my life and I don't know. After I realized what the story was about and that the Coors Brewing Company was going to put the money behind this program, I said I would. So I'm going to have to thank, and I would like to thank Mr. Preda Coors and Leo Kiley the stepping forward, finding this country, at least giving these women the chance to play baseball. I know a lot of people don't agree with it, maybe can't understand it. But my feeling is this, this is America. And this is the land of the free and the home of the brave. And all they want is a chance to play baseball and an opportunity. And I think that's what this country can give them. And I am, I am, Hey, I figure, hey, they've gone to wars for us and died for us. And they pay their taxes and they vote. In 1960, when tennis champion Bobby Riggs said that men deserve better treatment than women because they're better players, found out differently when Billie Jean King beat him in the straight match set. So I'm honored and very privileged to be a part of an organization for the past four years. And I would like to introduce you along with the coaches, and the owners, the 1997 Colorado Silver Bullets, right over there. <laughs> and yes, if you throw at them and hit them, they may come out to the mound. There's a lot of people here, a lot of friends of mine, and. A lot of families, and thank you for coming from so far and near. From all my friends in Georgia and Ohio and Michigan and Florida and California. I know it's been a long trip, and I'm thanking you now for coming and sharing this day with me. But there's one man that's not here. He's not here. A man that taught me, oh, he taught me how to catch a fish, and he taught me how to put a worm on a hook. Taught me how to clean that fish. Taught me how to rabbit and hunt. Taught me how to squirrel hunt. Taught me how to play pinochle and took me to church. Always had time for his family. Didn't make a whole lot of money, but I tell you, he saved the first dollar of his paycheck for us and the last one. He's not here. And he always told me, he said, son, he said, if you want to earn an honest day's dollar, he says, you got to put in on this day's work. I have tried to do that my whole life every time I have put that Major League Baseball uniform on. Through him and my mom, I have truly learned that the greatest words I have ever read in, on paper is in the song America. And it says, and crown thy good with brotherhood. From sea to shining sea, he would say to me when I walked out to the field to play the game and the umpire dusted off home plate, he'd look at me and say, son, he said, play ball. Son, play ball. If we could go back about 60 years right now, 
today on this Sunday afternoon to that little Blaine ball field back in Blaine, Ohio, there'd probably be a game going on right now. And there'd be some coal miners playing against some other coal miners. But we can't do that, and I know that. But there's probably a game going on right now. I know that. And this manager, I think, has probably delayed that game a little bit until I get through what I got to say. And as my dad would take the field right now, the lineup would probably sound something like this. These names are unfamiliar to you, but he's got a game going on right now. First base would be Chester Cas Casper. Second base, Frank Mertzkowski. Shortstop, Charlie Popish. Third base, Cookie Turhall. Left field, Ziggy Berlinski. Center field, Walter Garback. Right field, Pete Sabbath. Catching, Stush Mahalski. And in the bullpen, left to York. And there's Clarence Nitzel, dust off home plate. About right now. I say to you, Dad, play ball, Dad. Play ball. I want to leave you with this. To the people sitting in the front row, to all you people back there in the upper deck, the last row, all the way back there, I see you. I have never met a player or an owner who can honestly stand up and say, I own this game, it belongs to me. This is America, America's baseball. This game is owned, and it belongs to you, the fan. Cherish it and take care of it. Thank you.